sent a team to Bali two years ago with people dressed in polar bear suits with pla placards saying, save the humans. Um, we have to get this message across um, that this is about the human impact um, and that we are all in this as a world, but especially poor people. Um, so, no, no I, I, of course this methodology question is incredibly important and must be worked over, but can we please go back to the essence of the report about taking very seriously the need for action because of the effects of, of, of climate change on human beings? But you accept that this kind of discussion about numbers and methodology is important to very, underpin what you're saying? Very important indeed, and we need more data because, of course, all of us will be able to prepare better, know better, what to do if we have firmer, uh, a firmer basis to do that, but don't let's stop um, on, the, on the way to that. Let's get the research, the evidence in place so we can do better in future. I can't agree more with Barbara. There are two issues. The first issue is we need to invest more to get good data to enhance stretch, uh, uh, research. And what is important is not whether the number is high or low. We need to look at the trend. And the trend is going up. And so two issues. Big or small number does not detract the importance of the health impact on human being. Number two, more work to be done in future to fill that gaps in, in data and pet, better methodology. And hopefully we put this debate to rest. Put, put on the table now, as in the last 20 minutes, what data is needed? What, what difference in methodology is needed? There are three or four people who already want to come in. Let's try and move the debate forward. What has to be achieved on the data mining? Walter. Yeah, let's uh, science and scientists, uh, and I would say social and climate scientists, decide about. I'm not a scientist. So let's debate about that. It's like with lawyers. If you ask the advice of two lawyers, you have two opinions. And very often it happens the same in science. I used to work with science people a couple of years ago when I had to reorganize the science landscape in Switzerland. And you will never get univocal answers straight on. You will get answers as a result of the process. What a German scientist told me, please do it to avoid that scientists cannot say they did not know there is need for more data. And that is what we have achieved. Barbara and Margaret, what needs to be put on the table with new data? What, what would you urge? Uh, well, certainly on the disasters side, we need to get better uh, both data on extreme weather events, but also better uh, discussion with the climate scientists about when and where, in retrospect at least, these were climate related uh, due to the increase in the world's temperature or whatever it is, um, so that we can get better predictions of the scale that we're going to face in the future. That's certainly one part. I think also on the ground we need a much better understanding we, from the weather data that we're getting. We need much better, better understanding of how weather patterns are changing that are to do with uh, not so much disasters but just long term change changes in particularly agricultural productivity changes and those sorts of things, um, again, to help people understand how to adapt. So uh, we need a lot of science around uh, all these aspects around climate change. Data. Margaret Chan. In addition to what, what Barbara... What, what is needed? What extra data? In addition to what Barbara has said, one thing we need better clarity is what should be the, you know, the definition and the scope of you know, mortality and morbidity that should be counted and attribute to uh, uh, climate change. And I do agree that, you know, you can't put everything into the basket. You know, I, I hope the scientists and, you know, the public health people could come together and WHO would be happy to be part of that dis discussion and debate. Have a better de definition, clarity, and attribution. It's not easy, but it can be done. Could I have a little more light in here, Anthony, please? I can't really see anybody. And I can see a microphone going up there. If you could put up a bit of paper, it would help me, please. Someone has the microphone. No, hang on. Someone has the microphone at the moment at the back. Thank you very much. My name is Benjamin Barber. I regret to say, Mr. Fuss, that I'm a political scientist. But I think, in fact, there is something political science can contribute to this debate. And that's the role of power and its influence on scientific debates and methodology. The illusion here is that there is somehow nothing but an objective scientific debate with some people objecting to methodology, some people asking for better statistics. The reality is the opponents of climate change 
are massively invested in unsustainable production and consumption. They control much of the global media, and they spend a great deal of time trying to belittle every warning that has been put for the last 30 or 40 years on climate change. I think it's very important that when we look at this debate, well, of course, there are significant and real questions about method and about statistics, that the public airing of this debate, particularly in the media, is skewed towards power, which means not towards the scientific debates that you're having, but towards those who have a vested interest in preventing the public from understanding the threats of climate change. Whether they are 50%, 100%, or 150% of the predictions of the Human Impact Report, they will be terrible, and particularly it's clear for those who are poor. So I think we need to put power into the debate to really understand it. Thank Do you, you think you are facing uh, the obstacle of the vested interest of power in this argument? Walter Furst, and I quoted there your letter to the Wall Street Journal. There may be someone here from the Wall Street Journal who'd like to explain why they didn't publish your response to their editorial. Oh, there definitely are. Also, when you make uh, an analysis of, let's say, the controversial set, uh, reportings, uh, when you look at the sources, or when you see the movement of the so-called climate denialists, where they are originating from and where they want to head, that is clearly related to vested interest. Yes, and, and another sort of power is simply um, the poorest people who are the most affected have a very little voice in this whole debate at all. Um, and we might get some, a, a better balanced argument if all those people could speak for themselves about what they're experiencing. But wouldn't you say that the role of mobile technology is now changing significantly that there's a bottom-up empowerment going on very rapidly? Yeah, and that's fantastic. And in terms of campaigning that will take place in the second part of this year, um, I think that is going to be enormously different because of mobile technology, both for poor people, but also for the groundswell of particularly young people who are going to come together and expect the world to act on their behalf. Talking about vested interests, there's always vested interests in every issue. And the important thing is to get all the issues on the table, have engagement of all stakeholders, let's have a good debate and get the science out. If the science is not there, do whatever that needs to get the science out there and the data out there. The political science as well of bottom-up empowerment. I can see several people. Please be patient. I will come to you. Wait a minute, please. Good morning. My name is Patrick Kinney. I'm a professor and the director of the Climate and Health Program at Columbia University. Um, I think naturally there is a lot of argument about numbers because uh, there, there is such a, a limited research base. Uh, Could you just speak up a little bit? I think we're hearing, having trouble at the front here hearing you. I think naturally there are arguments about numbers because there's uh, been so little research to underpin these global estimates. But really the essence of the report I think is right on in, ter in terms of emphasizing the global justice issue and also in providing an important sort of exclamation point on a lot of global assessments, it's really not so different, this report, from the previous ones. But I think going forward, if we take it seriously, if Copenhagen uh, does, does take this as an urgent issue, what are we going to do at the local level? The adaptation issues really depend on having the research base to understand what's really going on in the local environment, and also a cadre of new professionals who are trained in public health and in climate science who can put these issues into practice on an adaptation scale at the local level. Thank, Thank you. you. Please. Question. Um, Could you yeah, introduce yourself, please? Yes, 